It's Friday, January 12th, 2024. Welcome to episode 85 of the Alameda Postcast, an audio service of the Alameda Post. I'm your host, Scott Peeler, and this edition of the Postcast, we take an early look at what you can expect on the March primary ballot, some of which is directly related to the state's budget shortfall. Improvements are coming to Ralph Apizado Parkway. COVID numbers are up, and we've got a guide to where to get your booster. The demolition of Lum School has begun in earnest. The Kiwanis Chili Cook-Off is back after taking the last few years off. And Alameda is proudly going to the dogs. These stories and more on this episode of the Alameda Postcast. Our top story, the California presidential primary is coming up on March 5th. The last day to register to vote is February 20th. Vote-by-mail ballots will be sent out starting February 5th. Drop-off locations open on February 6th. Mail-in ballots must be postmarked no later than Election Day and must be received by March 12th. The main focus is obviously the presidential primary, but there are multiple points of local concern. Let's look at some of what's on the ballot. The race to fill the remainder of Senator Dianne Feinstein's term took an odd twist this past week as baseball great Steve Garvey threw his hat into the ring as a Republican, shaking up the race for what had been viewed as a lock for the Democratic Party. Among the other candidates for that seat, 12th District Representative Barbara Lee and 47th District Rep Katie Porter. The top two vote-getters will advance to the general election. Feinstein's seat is currently held by LaFonza Butler, who was appointed by Governor Newsom. The eventual replacement will take office after the November election and serve until January of 2025. All of the candidates vying for the replacement term are also on the ballot, along with many others, for the full six-year term that begins in 2025. Alameda Vice Mayor Tony Desog is on the ballot, looking to become the U.S. representative for Barbara Lee's current 12th district seat. Ms. Lee is not seeking a 14th term as representative. There are, as usual, multiple measures on the ballot. The one most directly affecting Alameda is Measure E, a funding measure for the Alameda Unified School District. Currently, AUSD receives funding from two earlier parcel tax measures, B1 and A. B1 assesses 32 cents per square foot and is set to expire in 2025. Measure A assesses 26.5 cents and was to end in 2027. The new Measure E combines and replaces those two measures, resulting in a levy of 58.5 cents per square foot, capped at just under $16,000 per parcel, with senior exemptions. Measure E would be in place for nine years and is expected to raise $24 million annually. For an in-depth look at the ballot, see Kelsey Gore's article at alamedapost.com news. One of the reasons that Measure E was proposed is due to California's projected budget shortfall. Just a couple of years ago, California boasted a surplus in excess of $90 billion. For this year's $300 billion budget, the state faces a deficit of $68 billion. Since 40% of the state budget is allotted for kindergarten through 12th grade education, funding cuts are expected. The funds raised from Measure E would be under local control and therefore not subject to any state cutbacks. This was one of the issues addressed at the Tuesday school board meeting. Also on the docket, the swearing-in of Margie Sherritt to complete the term of former trustee Megan Sweet. Additionally, policy changes were put into place to align with Assembly Bill 1078, which, among other things, allows parents to file a complaint with the state if a local school board removes a book and the parents believe it to be in violation of California's 2011 FAIR Act, which requires instructional materials to accurately portray the history, viewpoints, and experiences of California's diverse and underrepresented racial, ethnic, and other groups, including LGBTQ+. For a closer look at Tuesday's meeting, including links to agendas and minutes, see Joyce Boyd's article at alamedapost.com slash news. If you travel Ralph Apizado Parkway regularly, get ready for some delays. Cross Alameda Trail traffic signal improvements are scheduled to begin for five intersections. Work is expected to begin mid-month and be completed by August. The intersections involved, Main Street, 3rd Street, Pogi Street, Webster Street, and Wilma Chan Way. Improvements include a variety of new bike signals, left and right turn arrows, and no right turn on red restrictions. In most cases, cyclists on the Cross Alameda Trail will be automatically detected to eliminate the need to push buttons. Work will be conducted Monday through Friday between 8 and 5. While motorists may experience some delays, bus stop access will not be affected. For a map of the area and contact information about the project, see alamedapost.com news. 
We're in something of a COVID spike these days. The JN1 variant has upped the numbers across the country and here in the Bay Area as well. Kind of a predictable pattern, the rise of a new variant coupled with holiday travel and gatherings. Still, we are well below numbers from a year ago, but the numbers could be better. Nationally, only 17% of Americans are up to date on vaccinations. Alameda does a bit better at 29%, with 38% of Bay Farm residents being up to date. It's also been a rough flu season, but the good news there is that this year's flu vaccine appears to be a pretty solid match for the circulating strain. Most insurance holders can receive these vaccines for no cost through their insurance company. For the uninsured, the CDC's Bridge Access Program provides free vaccinations, and here in Alameda, CVS, Walgreens, and Safeway all participate in that program. For locations and phone numbers for those pharmacies, see alamedapost.com features. Around Rittler Park, you can hear all kinds of sounds, the crack of a bat, the dribbling of a basketball, the honking of geese, and lately, the sounds of buildings being reduced to rubble. The demolition of Lum Elementary is in full swing. It's the next step in quite a series of events. After Lum was deemed unsafe in 2017, the project got underway last year with abatement protocols. The current demolition is expected to take a month or so. Temporary classrooms will then be erected to house Wood Middle students while the Wood Campus is being completely rebuilt. After that, Otis Elementary students will use the temporary facility while the Otis Main Building is being replaced. When both of those construction projects are complete, AUSD plans to build a multi-sport athletic complex on the Lum site for Alameda High School students, as the Hornets currently lack a track and their football field is in very bad condition. For details and some photos taken by yours truly, see alamedapost.com slash news. From 1999 until 2019, the Kiwanis Club of Alameda held their annual chili cook-off, providing some spicy competition and benefiting multiple local nonprofits. As with many things, pandemic put a stop to that, but now it's back. Saturday the 27th at the Al DeWitt Officers Club, 641 West Red Line on Alameda Point. Doors open at 5.30 with chili tasting and voting from 6 to 7 and dinner afterwards. In addition to the tasting, a silent auction, a full barbecue dinner with sides by Back 40 Texas Barbecue, music and dancing, and a live auction and raffle for high-ticket items. All proceeds will be distributed to Alameda nonprofit organizations serving children, youth, and families. Mark your calendars for the 27th. Get all the details at alamedapost.com features. In case you haven't noticed, Alameda is seriously one of the most dog-friendly towns in existence. On any given day, you'll see folks enjoying a good walk, a run in the dog park, or some great outdoor dining at the more than 100 restaurants in town that welcome our furry friends. It's fairly common around the Peeler household to hear the question, can we bring the dog? Fortunately, the answer is usually, in Alameda, yes. Friends of the Alameda Animal Shelter celebrating dog-friendly Alameda with the launch of the Alameda Pet Guide. This 32-page magazine-style guidebook lets you discover all the places you can dine, shop, and more with your canine companion. The guide features Al's Barbershop on Webster, stores like Modern Mouse and Whales and Friends, Bay Boats, Electric Boat Rentals, and one of my favorites, Mosley's Cafe. My dog always knows when we're headed to Mosley's and looks forward to attention and treats from Scott and the crew. Foz making it easier to identify pet-friendly businesses. Look for their bone-shaped, dog-friendly window stickers, which should start to show up soon. In the meantime, the guide should hit your mailbox starting this weekend. Not only is the post in the guide, thanks to our dog-friendly walking tours, but our intrepid canine reporter, Moof, graces the cover alongside his human companion, Jeff Cambra. To take a look at our cover models and get a preview of the Alameda Pet Guide, see Maria Godavage's article at alamedapost.com features. As we head into Martin Luther King weekend, a reminder that all three branches of the library will be closed on Monday, back to regular hours on Tuesday. Let's take a look at upcoming events. As always, alamedapost.com slash events. Tonight, Friday, Art of the African Diaspora brings Damon Powell's Exploring the Chakra to Fireside Lounge. Opening reception, 6.30 to 9.30. Exhibit on display through February 9th. The monthly coastal cleanup at Seaplane Lagoon, Saturday from noon to 2. Bring gloves in a bucket and then celebrate your accomplishment at the rake afterwards. Rhythmics Cultural Works opens Dance of Words, Saturday night, an exhibit of calligraphy by Hakim Akaramzada blending modern and traditional styles reflecting the culture and art of his native Afghanistan. Tuesday, Alameda Free Library presents a workshop on biking after dark with Bike East Bay providing tips and techniques for safe cycling after sundown. Don't forget to join us as a member, alamedapost.com slash memberships. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Mastodon, Threads, Blue Sky, as well as our own subreddit, and don't forget our channel on Apple News. Find the postcast wherever you get your podcast, or simply tell your smart device to play the Alameda Postcast podcast. As you enjoy the long MLK weekend, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on the greater meaning of the man and 
his legacy. I'm Scott Peeler. I'll be back next Friday with episode 86 of the Alameda Postcast.